commission versus booth rent. What should you be doing as a professional nail technician? We're gonna talk about this right now on the Biz Talk. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Are you? Go ahead. Tra Tracy um, has something to say, so it's obvious. Please, Trace, go ahead. Say it. Go. Say it. I have nothing to say. <laughs> nothing. Usually we're in a race to get the first comment in, and usually it's some kind of insult, but today we're going to be nice. We're playing nice? That's not a guarantee. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll see how that works we'll how through works. Yeah. this the podcast. Day. <laughs> the day. Um, okay. Commission versus booth rent. I think we had, um, again, we, we like to fish through the comments and the DMs and what people are asking for. This is a topic that came up. Um, it's a really good topic because as a professional uh, nail tech, and I think not even a nail tech, but just in the beauty industry, right? If you're a hairstylist or nail, any type of beauty professional, that's kind of a path you have to choose, right? Am right. I going to work for a salon in a commission situation or am I going to be on my own and just rent the space within the salon, pay rent, but I've got my own business, right? Right. So first thing, Trace, can you, before we get into uh, what your take is, let's, let's kind of explain, I think we need to kind of break down for people mm -hmm. um, that are trying to choose like what are the pros and cons the differences between the two booth rent versus commission like what are the big differences right so that we can understand before we talk about you know what we recommend so booth rent basically you're you own you own your business you are given a key to let me let me clarify actually this is what it's supposed to be got it because a lot of people are booth renting and you technically are not booth renters but that's a whole different subject. Sure. We'll, we'll just go with like what, what it's supposed, supposed to, be. to be. Yeah. So if you're a booth sprinter, um, you get a key to the place. You can come and go as you please. It's not specified hours. You're not told when you can and when you can't. Um, you are responsible for all your own product. Uh, you, uh, I think, pricing pricing. Yep. Uh, you can't be told what your pricing is. That's that's totally up to you. So those are the big big ones like you're you're really that all you're doing is picture um you are renting a building yeah just inside of a building right so it's kind of like if we um as a business if we rent a building from the owner yeah like i'm gonna but i'm gonna operate the what i'm responsible for is paying rent Whatever those um, rental responsibilities, yep. am I responsible for electricity? Am I responsible for internet? Basically, like maybe the salon or the owner is going to have, okay, you're responsible, like you got to pay this much for electricity. We're going to share it among the nail techs, internet to the building. Everybody gets access, but you're going to pay this much. Those types of things. Correct. But then you operate like how we would operate in, in this building how we operate it's, yeah. it's my business yeah it would be like exactly you renting a place and this is your monthly whatever your monthly rent and electric usually that's all included in your rent electricity everything water is included now picture them not giving you a key to your place that you're renting right to this building to this building and then them telling you you can only be here from nine to five yeah and you can't come in on, it doesn't work that way so that's that's basically Booth rent. Right. So what booth rent should be, that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. Versus now, let's talk about commission situation. What is that set up? For, so, for them, again, sorry, but I just want to say this, like, you got to check with your state too, oh, because the laws, especially like in California, where, where we're at, I know like booth renting laws, they're very different than what it is in Texas or Florida or New, New York. York. New York, I don't even think you can I don't think rent. you can either. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is very... In general, general, my experience, my, you know, that I've dealt with and laws change constantly. They do. So, they do. Um, commission is you technically are working for someone that you 
because a lot of people get that confused. Right. And you have set up an agreement. Uh, usually it's anywhere from 40 to 60 percent or 40 percent you, 60 percent the owner. Sometimes it's 50, 50. Sometimes it's 60, 40. The opposite you're getting. It depends. That's that's usually discussed sure. before you get hired, obviously. They are responsible for product, usually. Well, we can get into that. Well, again, more. let's talk about what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, then they are more responsible of putting people in your seat. Right. You know, so the marketing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it just it and sometimes you're paid by hourly and then you get commission on top of that. That's all between that. But you technically are working for that person and then they're going to give you a percentage of the nails that you do. Right. So you're an employee. Yeah. You work for the Them. salon. Them. You show up. They tell you, you got to be here at eight. Mm-hmm. You have, it's yeah. your, your hours are eight to this. Yep. Um, we're going to be responsible for marketing the salon and bringing in the people. Mm-hmm. Um, you just crank it out and you get a percentage of whatever it's 60%, 50%, whatever is negotiable. Yeah. But there's also hourly. Yes. Some situation, some salons will just say, Hey, we're going to pay $13 an hour. And you get your tips or whatever. And you get your tips and regardless if there's a client in your seat or not. Yeah. Right. Like you show up and you get paid hourly. And then there's mix. You're going to get paid hourly unless you have someone sitting in your seat, then you get your commission. So I see those are all discussed. But that again, that's all employment. Right. So that's that is very, very different because you're talking about being an employee versus owning Mm -hmm. your own business and in. When we talk about owning your own business, which I think is the majority of the situation, at least in the nail industry, at least our customer base, I know majority is booth rent. Yes. You are a business owner. You're responsible for your insurance, your everything. You're running the business. You're just renting and paying, uh, you know, to space. space. Exactly. So those are the essential differences, um, at least from our experience. Now let's talk about what is the best situation mm. for nail pros. You know what I mean? Um, what do you think is the right, quote unquote, the right way to go in your opinion? <laughs> yes and it's, no. Yes and no. Um, personally, I think there is a, a lot to say for going into a employment situation when you first come out of school. Sure. This is why. You're not you may need the money. <laughs> you know, I know that this is where I, I kind of contradict myself. I personally went straight to booth rent. Right. However, again, I think we've talked about this. My husband and I sat down. How long can I go without actually bringing income, income in? What's my goals that, you know, in a month I want to be able to at least cover my product. And then three months I want to be able to cover, you know, we could afford that now. Um, and again, I went into a salon that even though it was a booth rent since, rent situation and they were their own business owners they were very happy to help me yeah and and help me get clientele and and let me feed off their overflow and and show me how to do nails that's not always the situation when you go into a booth rent. right you know people get very protective oh it's my secrets and don't look yeah um whereas when you go to an employment a place usually the employer it's in their best interest to teach you totally right <clears throat> so they help teach you you help build you a clientele they help all these things um so that's the benefit of that you you're you know if it's an hourly plus commission you have at least a certain amount of money coming in yeah while you learn you know just a side note on that, going into a booth rent situation, let's say where there's three, four other nail pros, and if everybody's like not helping and secretive, this is a topic we, we've discussed before. There are huge benefits to helping and supporting each other in that environment. The first most obvious one in, you know, if you're in a salon, there's a newbie that comes in, why you should help them and help train them. There's going to be a time where somebody you're going to need somebody's help or somebody Mm -hmm. to get your back and you might have to depend on that person it's just good to do help somebody they'll help you back it's good karma like it's a good vibe in the salon you can feel it there's so many positives to it honestly to your best interest it's it that's why we don't talk crap about people correct and we help when we can no i'm not saying you know because there are people that will abuse that 
like, but you, you just never know when you need that help. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just, I wanted to just point that out now on, like, I've always loved this strategy of if you're a beginner, you know, starting out in a commission situation and then building up into, uh, a booth rent, Mm -hmm. right? So let's just do this. Let's just break down money potential real quick. Okay. Okay. Money potential, booth rent versus commission. Which one will you make more money in the long run? Let's say, let's say you, you, let's take technique out. Let's take clientele out. Let's just go straight, um, you know, apples to apples here. Your experience, you got your technique down. Booth rent versus commission, which one ultimately would you make more money? Hands down booth rent. Yeah, hands down booth rent. Yeah. Um, Because you're going to make the full amount of money. And I mean, we recently have done a biz talk on breaking down how much it costs per service. It's just, you're just, now, there are people that just are, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. I don't want to have to think about my product. I don't want to have to think about this. I don't want the, you know, the hours that I actually do want to work. I don't want the overhead of a booth rent. So that could actually be a factor like I only want to work a couple hours a week well then it might not be worth having a booth rent you know so um those kind of play into it um and then there's different situations as I've totally forgot where I was going but there are different situations of commission um where they're not even doing that well and we can talk about that a little bit like they're being taken advantage a little bit sure sure um okay so going just comparing money you know, the winner is booth rent. <laughs> stress level. <laughs> what about like stress level booth rent versus commission? It depends on your personality. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a control freak. Uh-huh. It's going to be very stressful for me to be working on commission. Sure. If once I build a clientele. Right. Um, I like to control my environment. I like to control my hours. I like to in- control my income totally so it depends if you're working for the right people yeah it really does it's just like when i went in and i was booth reading for amazing woman kathy chartier love her to death um i would never probably have ever thought to open my own salon sure had she not sold the business right you know even though i was that control freak her, her environment was perfect for me i loved working for in her place um so you know maybe if you have the perfect environment and commission it's not stressful but for me not to have that control is stressful it's really interesting because when i say stress level you went on the side of like the control is what's going to cause you the most stress Mm -hmm. versus there's a lot of people i'm the same way obviously right but but there's a lot of people that what causes them stress is the unknown mm, and, the and business side. the business side dealing with inventory, dealing with the finances, dealing with like, oh my God, marketing and I have to do this and invest this money and that's what caused the stress. And so in that way, you know, maybe going into a commission situation is going to be less stressful. If they're doing that, you know, if you're, you know, I think we've talked about this before where, you know, Sometimes when it's a commission, especially, and you're working for someone, they don't want you to actually promote yourself on your own IG and all those things. Yeah. Now, if that salon is doing the, it right and the promoting the salon and right. taking care of the business correctly, then that stress is off your plate. But if they're sure. not, you still have that stress, but you have no control over it. Correct. <laughs> that is, no, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. If the, if the salon is doing it correctly, then the, it should be the posting you know, to the salon yeah. IG posting to the salon Facebook, if they have a YouTube channel, so on and so forth. I think that as if you're an employee, yeah, you know, the employer can say like, hey, this is a no phone situation, you know, and, and they have the, they have the control, right. the right, depending on your state. Again, I don't know all the laws, but I know certain situations like you, it could take away from work. Now that's the control thing. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I really think it is about personality type Tracy. Yeah, I agree. Over the long term. In the beginning, I, I totally think that method of starting commission is good for everybody to learn the ropes. You're not going to be so financially strapped. I think it's a good way. Um, in the long term, we have to talk about personality type. Is it more control? Do you want to have, you know, direct impact on your own financial yeah. situation? Or you, do you like building? 
Yeah, for me also, the other stress part of not having control is not being able to fire a client when I want to. Right, exactly. And, and that's legit. Like, we have people at DMS that are like, I have this client that, you know, tells me the story. I'm like, fire them. And they're like, I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I, I have to see this person and I can't. You Exactly. So again, it comes down to personality type. Does that drive you more crazy? Or are you just like, yeah. you know what? Don't bother me. It's not my business. I'm just going to go in and do my thing. I'm not going to talk, you know, or, or I'll be nice, but I can handle that. I couldn't handle that. Yeah. You know, again, it depends on where, who are you as a person to determine ultimately, should you be booth rent or should you be commission? I think that's yeah. a big consideration yeah. to take in and i know a lot of people that will go booth rent i have a uh, well shelly stewart our yeah. mentor yeah so she, i mean she's an experienced tech tech she moved from one state to another and she went into a commission kind of situation sure now she was completely honest with the lady i am doing this until i build a clientele and then i want a booth rent sure and it worked out she just switched it's she, great you know so be honest with you know transparent with, transparent yeah if you're going to do that, make sure that you haven't signed anything that says you're a non-compete, that right. you can't take your clientele, that you can't do all that. Um, you know, that's, again, open communication. Yeah, I think that's huge. And you can still have a good relationship as long as you have an open, honest conversation, you know, in that situation yeah. that worked out good. Let us know uh, your thoughts on booth rent versus commission in the comments below. Um, what's the best for you? What did you do? Why? What's your personality type? We'd love to hear all these things about the topic. Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next time on the Biz Talk.